You're now tuned in to Life Song Radio, a weekly podcast dedicated to accurately studying the Word of God in a comprehensive and biblical manner. Listen in as host Phil Ramsey and Blake Shankle dig into the Word line by line, verse by verse, leaving no stone unturned. Grab your Bible and your notebook and get prepared to study the living, breathing, active Word of God. Now, here are your hosts of Life Song Radio. Hello, uh, welcome to Life Song Radio. My name is Phil Ramsey, and today I have with me my co-host, Blake the Duck Slayer Shankle. At least you got something right. So you doing a lot of hunting lately? Yeah. Yeah, Can it's me? been a good good season for us. What's a good average duck kill? For the year or for a day? For the year. I would say, I mean, anywhere between 600 and 1,000. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're we're about that mark. Do you wrap bacon around your duck? Oh, maybe? yeah. Oh, yeah. Bacon's good with everything. <laughs> <laughs> kill anything. Wrap some. Kill a possum. Wrap it's some bacon wrap, around it. You're it's good. good. Throw the possum away. Eat the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good. How you been? Been good. Uh, uh, excited to come back today. I'd like to thank our uh, one of our sponsors, Beaver Baptist Church. Blake and I go to Beaver Baptist Church, and they, they help us with the TV ministry. If... Uh, something new that we've been doing, uh, Satellite, Channel 14, uh, U-verse, Comcast. There's one more. What is it? Comcast, U-verse. It's not, is it direct? Well, no. it's direct. Well, Dish. Com- yeah, Dish. It's, it's on Channel 14 okay. on Satellite. Oh, I got you. It's on, one of the, it's on direct. It'll be on Dish uh, hopefully soon. Antenna 24? 23. 23, okay. So, but again, thank Beaver Baptist Church for helping with that. We have a weekly podcast. Now we have a weekly television program. If you live in the Memphis, Tennessee area, you'll be able to watch that. And we have, we've had some great response on that. So we're so excited uh, to be able to do that. Yeah. Just, uh, just opens up a lot of doors. We're able to go into literally hundreds of thousands of homes across the Mid-South. What's our main goal at Life Song? Well, our main go is to uh, for is a word by word, line by line Bible study to to learn God's word. Yeah, seven thirty on Monday nights. By the way, <laughs> let me get that in there. Yeah. yeah, we just simply go through the scripture, and uh, we've studied several books since we've been doing this. We've been you know two years now in Romans, and we're on chapter twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe we'll be in uh, verse ten today. I yeah. think that's all we're going to be able to do, uh, probably. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, a lot of people ask us, why do we go so slow? And I, I, this is kind of the way we study and the way we learn the Word. You know, there's there's other ministries who take it a little bit faster, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We just take our time, kind of 30-minute show. You can't really get much in. I mean, you can go one or two speeds, right? We can go fast through it or we can go slow through it. I don't think either way is wrong, but yeah. yet we've just chosen to really dissect it. Uh, we, we look at the Greek grammar. Uh, it do, yeah. doesn't mean we're Greek students. doesn't mean you have to be a Greek student, but that's... But, but it's good to go to the original language and understand what the author yeah. is, is doing is saying there. And we, we, we try to pull those things out and also try to apply the text as well to our daily lives. I mean, it does us no good if we read it and then don't put it to application, right? Yeah. I, so, was, I was studying with uh, – every week I do a weekly Bible study with a, 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 ba- a girls' basketball team. Yeah. And uh, the Greek grammar came in as we were talking about sin, living in sin, yep. present tense, continuous – and was able to explain that. So it's good to know those things. And one of the places I go to, uh, and there's a lot of places you can go, but I have the blue letter yep. uh, Bible app, and you can pull the scripture up. You can go to the verse, look at the Greek. It also it'll give you it parse it out. Yep. It also gives you the definitions of the parsing, which helps. Absolutely. You know, so a lot of times when it says something indicative or passive or whatever, you're like, well, I forgot what that meant. Yeah. You just hit the button. It shows you what it's meant, and you're able to get a little bit better understanding of that. But anyway, it's good to be able to have uh, – praise the Lord for technology. Man, you know? absolutely. I know I know. our ministry has grown because of it, and so yeah. I'm thankful for that. But, uh, Phil, I, we're, we're back in Romans chapter 12, as you said, verse 10 today. We're moving on from verse 9. Kind of took two weeks there on verse 9. But verse 9 is really sets the plate for verse 10, but it's so big. You know, yeah. we really – the first week we did verse 9 was kind of a portion. We, we had done actually verses 7 through uh, 8 
and then picked up nine. We didn't have time to really dissect it all. So here we are in verse 10. So I'm going to read. I'm just going to kind of get a little run and start to that and kind of read this in context. And so he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10, here's our verse for the day. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Verse 11, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Well, there's a lot of application right there, isn't it? It is. Yes. So it's uh, like we said last week, this is this is how we live out. If, if you've been following the program, we, we've started, we, we live our lives as a, as a living sacrifice. As, as we start understanding that mm-hmm. and, and, and doing that, we roll into our, our role in the body of Christ by using our gifts, and, and the ball just keeps rolling down the hill. Yeah. And, then, and then we get to all of these, uh, these commands, I would call them commands, mm-hmm. that, that, that are uh, marks of a true Christian, not perfection, but that are marks of a true Christian. And uh, I've had to adjust my life based on what I've been studying. That's I good. Have, I mean, well, it's bad and good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, I find that, boy, I just, I really don't think I've been doing that, you know, like the scripture says. So it's really good how the word, again, trans transforms yep. your mind. You yep. know, as we are in the world and we, we, we're, we have a tendency to in the flesh to go back to a worldly way of living, but we renew our minds by the Word of God. Yeah. And with, with the Holy Spirit, we're now able to obey these commands because we have, because we're saved and we have the Holy Spirit. Apart from that, this is impossible. Right. It's not going to happen. You can try it. And you can fake it for a while, yeah. But you're gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to do it, right? It won't be genuine. It won't be from the heart. It'll right. be something that's exterior as well. Right. So, that, and and what we're saying here, and what Paul's saying actually, it really flows from this love, right? All these commands that we see in here, all this abhorring what is evil, clinging to what is good, and what we're being devoted. This really flows from this heading of love. This is what love looks like. This is kind of love with feet, as we talked about mm-hmm. last week. This is the action of it. You know, we we're to love genuinely, but part of being part of loving genuinely and not being hypocritical is actually abhorring what is evil. And then we're to cling to what is good. And Paul says today that we are to be devoted to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, true love is fiercely loyal. True love has, 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 has loyalty to one another. And in this one another is speaking to the body of Christ. Right. This is speaking to brothers and sisters in Christ. And the, the, there is a loyalty that exists between you and I. There's a loyalty that exists with our church, the universal church. And and this word here, he says, be devoted. It's In the Greek, it means there's this a loving affection, prone to love, loving tenderly, and, and was used in the description of the mutual love of parents and children, wives and husbands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and in the context, it's referring to God's family composed of all believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, that's, that's what he means by the one another there. Yeah. So we, in context, we're talking about the relationships in the body of Christ. Correct. We're not, we're not really, even though we, we do love our enemies, yes. in context, we're in the body of Christ. This is the love that we have for one another. And did you know this love in the body of Christ is, though we don't really understand it, is really far superior than actual blood brothers and blood sisters. You remember when, uh, and I don't know the scripture, but when Jesus, I mean, when, when uh, Jesus's earthly or earthly mother, <laughs> you know, so her <laughs> sister, spiritual mother, <laughs> spiritual father, for his yeah, mother, right? When, when she, when she was at the door and yeah. they said, your mother wants to see you. And then Jesus explains, who's my mother? Who's mm-hmm. my father? So the, the, when you've been saved, when you've been adopted into the family, there is a, there is a family love yep. Yep. there's, and it's not based on, it's not based on emotions it's not based on outer appearances you know we every sunday around the lunch table at my house there's always an argument i got three kids right and one's one's married uh and then i have a girl who's 23 and another girl who's 16 and they always are arguing every week who does daddy love more (laughs) and then who does mama which is cindy my wife which one does she love more you know, yeah. and so, but this love, this love is a, a family love. It's not based on what you can do for me. That's right. It's based on, look, like my kids, my wife, you know, no matter what they do, 
though sometimes I might not like it, I'm always going to love them apart from this. Yep. This is the love we're talking about Absolutely. in the body of Christ. Right. Absolutely. There, the difference, and you say, well, what's the difference here? Because we have love genuinely, love without hypocrisy in the first, in, in verse 9, and then we have this be devoted to one another. The, the difference is, as Paul says in verse 9, is we're to love genuinely from the heart. But but in verse 10, he's talking more about this devotion. There's a, there's a little bit of difference here, this devotion, and particularly devotion to family members. Just like you said, the, the family members, not only your own family, it's the same. What he's talking about is the, the family members inside the body of Christ, but this this love here is that same love in which you have for your family your immediate family is that 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 goes out to those who have been bought by the blood of christ who've been united in jesus christ having the same father which is god right. and so uh, he says here be devoted but look here he, he says who who is it that we're to be devoted to and we talked about it. who is it that we're to serve who is it that we're to have this intimate relationship with and the the devotion i think we've had this discussion this week is it must be i think it has to be in light of the local church yeah it has to be in light of the local body of believers that you are a part of would you agree or disagree? Well, it's flowing. If you, like you said, if you just keep following that snowball as it goes down the hill, we've already talked about using our gifts. Where do we do that? In the local fellowship, in the yes. local body of Christ. Correct. This love, and this is what this is what it's going to start getting you pretty good. It's not optional. It's yeah. it's a mark right. of a believer. Uh, Last week we read this, but let's let's read it again. Uh, John thirteen thirty four. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another by this. All people will mm. know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Now, like I said, this isn't optional. This is a command. This is this is this is the essence of who we are. So let's start looking at maybe. Uh, here's one in First John five. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father, guess what? Loves whoever who has been born of Him. Mm-hmm. By we know by this we know that we love the children of by the excuse me y'all. Is this King James again? <laughs> By this, we know that we love the children of God mm. when we love God and obey his commandments. Let me read one more. Yeah. I know you're itching. No, you're good. First John 4, 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Mm. For, for he who does not love his brother whom he has whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Mm. And this is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must always love his brother. So the, Not an option. So there's a command. There's a command. There's a command to, to obey, and we are to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. And and that can be difficult at times because we are sinful people. Yeah. We have different opinions. Right. We come to the table. Think about this in context, if you will. Think about first century Christians. Think about the Gentiles out of all the people uh, that, that the Jews hated. Guess what? Now they're adopted into the family. Mm. Man, that was very tough loving, right? I mean, this this had way more immediate uh, or way more uh, 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 gumption, if you will, maybe more pointed when you've got Jews and Gentiles in the same um, uh, arena. Uh, barbarians, right? You have the, the, the Greeks and the barbarians. You have the, the, the high philosophers and these lowly people that we've got to get along here. Yeah. And so Paul is, he's, he's, uh, giving us command, he says, and like you read earlier, you can't love God and not love and not love your brother, right? That that it flows naturally from loving the Father, and and why is that? Because of what God has done for us. Yeah. We, we've already read Romans five is that He loved us while we were at our ugliest, while we were yet sinners. Christ loved us, and that's there was nothing in us that uh, that commended us to God. There was nothing in us that was lovable, but yet God loved us, and that's who we take our cues from. That's who we imitate. Yeah. And so, uh, the, the the like we talked about this devotion, it's it's got to be in light of the local church, and it's hard to be like He says, be devoted. It's hard to be devoted to Christians in brotherly love outside of the church context. If you, and what I mean by that is, is how am I devoted to my brothers and sisters in Christ if I don't go to church? If I don't, if I don't see them, love on them, uh, exhort them. If I don't go weekly basis, it doesn't have to be just on Sundays, but but anytime the church doors are open and I'm not here, I can't, I cannot be devoted to you behind a computer screen. 
I can't be devoted to you behind watching Facebook all the time. I can't do that. There's no way I can be doing that. I have to. We have to be fellowshipping with one another. And, and it's not just on Sunday mornings. It's Sunday nights. It's throughout the week. Am I calling? Am I checking on you? Am I doing devotions with you? Am I, are we holding each other up, if you will? Yeah. And uh, we, we, we serve, we're serving one another. We, we, with our gifts, and we serve with the same type of affection that Christ has shown us. And I think that that's so um, – uh, we lose that a lot of times. Yeah. And, and so he says here that we're to be devoted and deeply committed to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And he says here, in brotherly love, word for brotherly love here is Philadelphia, mm-hmm. right? That what The, the <clears throat> brotherly love city, if you will. Yeah. I would say I've been there numerous times. My brother lives there. I would say there is no brotherly love in Philadelphia <laughs> at all. Trust me, not much at all. But uh, what, what do we know about this word? Well, <clears throat> this brother. Well, let me read this scripture before I go. That was, I was I had this pulled up. Just another. It's First John two nine, and this was part of our Bible study today. It, it, that I have the the basketball team. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Mm-hmm. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in darkness and, and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So most people would say, I don't hate anybody. Well, sim- but. But if you don't love them, now in the, in the body, of, if you don't love them, in reality, that falls on that category of hating. It's either this or that. There's no in between. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, you ask the question, uh, love, what, your, what is your, uh, your ver- what are you, NSAB? Yep. NASAB? What does it say? Brotherly love. Or love devoted. There's Some of the translations have, have different uh, words. Mine it, says be devoted. To one another in brotherly love. Yeah. The SV says, love one another with brotherly affection mm-hmm. and outdo one another in showing honor. So in the, in the, that's what we we're talking about earlier. If you go to uh, Bible, blue letter Bible and look at this word, uh, yeah, it, it is phileo. Yep. And there's, there's several different kinds of love, but this is a, uh, like I said, like we said earlier, a love that's within the family. Correct. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. We get our word philanthropy from it. Yeah. This, this phileo, this yeah. Philadelphia phileo love, if you will, we talked about, we talked about last week an agape love. Uh, uh, but this is the phileo love. This is, we get, this is something that, you know, philanthropy uh, from it, which is, what is philanthropy? Philanthropy. It's benevolence towards one another, mm-hmm. right? It's showing a love, it's showing an affectionate relationship uh, among people. And, and it's, this is the type of affectionate relationship in the other church among Christian converts that in spite of their diverse status and various backgrounds, this is what amazed the pagan culture. Right? This is what God is calling us to do within the midst of our culture. Within the within the midst of all the hate, within the midst of what we they say in unity, but yet there's no unity there at all. We are to love one another. The, the pagan culture, the world should look at us and say, that is love. That is what the world this love is what the this is what the world needs, but they don't know they need it. You know, this is the love that's with inside the church, this brotherly love that we love one another so much, right? That we're willing to, I'm willing to go to, I'm willing to die for you, brother. This is a, this, our, our love for one another in the Christian faith is more stronger than almost sometimes our family love. There are some family members probably in your church and your family, immediate family, that you probably don't love near as much as me. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty that's a stretch. <laughs> that there. is stretch there, <laughs> but no. But we're our our church family should be very tight. Yeah. What 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 are some things that would would cause problems? You know, it, what, what what are some things that would cause problem and hinder us from loving the way the way God's commanded us to love? Our self own our own self exhortion, if you will. Our own we want to esteem our own selves yeah. a lot of time. Pride. Really is yeah. what hurts our own opinions, our own ways. Blake's way that hurts a lot of times because we want to put ourselves out before this other person or yeah. this other family. Yeah, and I'll I'll love you, but but in, in the background, I'm looking for some kind of gain. I'm going to show you love, but 
it, when it's all said and done, what can I get out of it? Absolutely. That's not what this, yeah. that's not what the, this is a self sacrificing love. This is a humility type of love. We, you know, we just came out of a Romans 12, three. It says, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Right. So, so if you think you're something, you know, or elevated above somebody else, it's really hard to love them the way. And really, as we go to this next verse, it's really going to play out even more. Yeah. Uh, Let me read this verse real quick before you do that. Speaking of loving inside the household of faith, Galatians 6.10 says, So then, while we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Mm-hmm. That, that Absolutely, right? That's what who we're to be. And especially to those who are of the household of faith. If we cannot love those inside of our own church, how are we going to love those outside of the, in the world? Yeah. How are we going to do that? We have especially have to love those with inside of our church, especially those who have been bought by the blood of Christ. You know, this is where this is our family. I can't stress it enough is that we, we need to be together. We need to be devoted to one another. If you are inside of a local church, which you should be today is I, I would say examine the love that you have for your brethren, brother and sisters in Christ. Is there is there animosity between you? Mm-hmm. Right. First of all, that, that needs to be taken care of before you come to the Lord's Supper. You know, before you take of the Lord's Supper and you have that family meal, I need to go to that brother and say, hey, man, we're, we're living in sin. I've, I've got an issue with you. I want to confess yeah. that to you. And that, and that's something that's really hard to do, but you it, but you got to do it. Well, it is. You know it. It's, yes. It, it's a very humbling experience to to do that, to go to a brother and admit, look, you know, I've, I've done wrong. Right. And and maybe maybe he's done something that offended you. Well, you got to get that right, man. Well, you're exactly right. You just said it. This love, this phileo love, it does not come easy. It, it takes diligence. It takes devotion. And it must be cultivated. For It entails difficult duties, right? It, such as a willingness to bear one another's burdens. Mm-hmm. That's what we're called to do. Uh, maybe forgive shortcomings in our failures, uh, there is a, it's more of a, there's a stick to itness, if you will, that uh, put it this way. True love remains loyal through thick and thin. Right. There is an unconditional resilience and there's grace that accompanies that when it comes to this type of love. And so this is why I think this is why church membership is so important is church is way more than just socializing, seeing each other on certain events and days of the week. It's the New Testament fellowship that we're talking about, that the Bible describes, goes so much deeper than mere socializing when we get together as a church. It takes place when we consider how we can lift each other up, how we can build each other up, how we can spur one another, how we can exhort one another. And... And that is the love that Paul is talking about here. Galatians 5.13 says that we're to serve one another. Ephesians 4.32 says we're to forgive each as Christ has forgiven us. Galatians 6.2 says that we're to bear one another's burdens. Hebrews 10 talks about that. It says how believers gathered in Jesus' name to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works and to exhort one another. That's what we're to do as believers in Christ. Now, just think if we did that in our churches. Yeah. Well, and as, as we get to this other word, it's even it's going to get it's going to get bigger. But uh, let's just it says love love one another with brotherly affection. Out outdo one another in showing honor. Mm-hmm. So we are to, and what this word means is it it takes the meaning of actually leading to do something. Mm-hmm. It's uh, uh, Blake's married. I'm married. So so when we walk to our car. Look, we step out, or we should. I hope me, my wife's yeah. not watching. Them. So the word's working on me. I told you the word's working on me. <laughs> it takes diligence, and you, we, we know yeah. we're not. We're preaching to ourselves here, right? Yeah, yeah. I was talking to my mother today, and we were actually discussing the scripture, and I mean, it was just really a good conversation. Uh-huh. But you know, we we fall short of right. this, so we were really to. We need to run and outdo one another in showing honor yeah. and and lifting other people up, putting other people's yeah. needs and before our own. Well, that was the illustration you were going to that you didn't finish. Is is the, you we hold the door for our wives, yeah, right? Or or when you go to a table, what do you do? It, it, gentlemanly should we should yeah. pull the, pull the uh, allow her to seat be seated first. Right. And so what you're doing is you're honoring your wife. You're honoring, you're respecting her. You're giving honor. You're giving preference to her. And that, and that's that I think that's the illustration, right? That Paul's saying is is and and the idea is that believers are continually and supernaturally to give 
preference to one another, something that, you know what, something that simply doesn't come naturally to us. This is something that has to be spurred on by the Holy Spirit. This only happens to really believers because, because we want to be, we're so self-absorbed. And you and I were talking about this. How does this look? How does this look today? How does this look? When, when I give preference and honor to a brother in Christ, one one little thing that gets in my crawl, if you will, is when maybe I, when someone, when I'm watching someone in, interact and a, and a brother or sister comes up to this person and, and has a legitimate issue, or let's just say that person is excited about something, but that next person, that person they're talking to, quickly turns that conversation upon them rather than lift that other person up you know whether yeah. it's whether this d- person's dealing with a sin and maybe comforting that person or whether he's he's done something that is awesome or great and, and rather than lifting them up they turn it upon them that that really gets to me there so so to live this out if i would have come to you and said blake man you you, act, you ready to act yeah. it out we're good at yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> <I will. laughs> man i'm really struggling I, I'm, I'm really struggling watching things on tv i shouldn't watch and i just want you to pray for me because i'm i'm just I'm having a hard time. Yeah, Phil, I was I was having a hard time this past week. I mean, you know, I, I struggle all the time with uh, this stuff, and and so yeah. I, I, uh, anyway, I'm I'm good this week. I'm really good. So I'm so, so what you do is you you turn the conversation from listening and humbling from a brother to yep. help him to making it about you. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I was telling you today, my 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 girl, who's uh, she just graduated college. She does a women's Bible study. Very yeah. proud of her. Five or six ladies there, and she brought. Uh, Somebody drove an hour and 45 minutes to come to her Bible study. And I came home one night. They were there, and I was talking to them. And I noticed something about this young lady in, in, her, uh, in her 20s that you really don't see. First of all, you really don't see it in very many people at all. Correct. Especially the younger generation. And, uh, and as I was talking, I noticed that she did something. You know what she did? Which is rare. <laughs> she was listening. Hmm. And make an eye contact and listening genuinely and and just was uh uh it wasn't it wasn't about her you know a lot of times the, the younger generation and really everybody they'll they'll turn it yeah. and make it about them and my I, my daddy always says this i was telling you today uh, in a conversation he would say look enough about me enough about, let's quit talking about me let's talk about you what are you Think of me. And that's kind of the mentality <laughs> yeah. of the world. Absolutely. Well, that are in the body well, of Christ, actually. Well, it, we do that. And that's what Paul's saying is, is honor the other person. And here's what happens when you honor that other person, when you stop talking about yourself, right? You hold in check that innate human tendency to honor yourself, right? That's what we do. And when focusing on others, and it, it is somewhat hard to focus on ourselves, right? Correct. That's what happens. So true love doesn't put others down. True love lifts them up, puts them in the place of honor. I'll read one more scripture. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing, that that's perfect. Okay, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. What if we did that? Blake, yeah. let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hey, practice that this yeah, week. And we encourage you to do, do the same thing. Hey, we appreciate you watching and tuning in by podcast and watching on TV. You can go to lifesongradio.com, view all the podcasts, and, and, and keep up with us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email uh, information is on the screen. Just give us a call, and we'll see you next week for another edition of Life Song Radio. You've been listening to Life Song Radio. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to continue to study throughout the week, check out the resources available on our website at lifesongradio.com. See you next week for another episode of Lifesong Radio.